All right, guys. So today we're here to check out the Eco High Ear C. Now, I am a huge fan of Eco IEMs. In fact, my favorite ones are the OH1s, the OH10s. If you follow this channel, you pretty much have heard me say that on almost every IEM video that I've done. But both of those cost over $100. So when I saw that Eco has the High Ear C, which comes in at $79, I definitely wanted to check them out to see, you know, if there's a lot of value here and how they actually compare to the OH1s and the OH10s, which are both pretty bass heavy IEMs. I'm a fan of bass uh, and I'm really a huge fan of IEMs. So if Eco is able to pull off something very similar in a price point of $79, I think that's going to appeal to a lot of people. First, I want to start with the name. Having the name High Ear C, I kind of thought these might actually have a USB-C connection, uh, which I'm very intrigued by because uh, not only does the new iPhone have a USB-C connection, I am an Android user, and pretty much every phone uses a USB-C connection at this point. So I kind of thought that was what I was getting into, but that is not the case here. But what these are is a high-res audio certified pair of IEMs that's using a single golden tone dynamic driver mixed with four or balanced armature drivers in each ear. So that's actually a lot of drivers crammed into these. And again, it's something a little bit different than what Eco has done in the past. Now the body of the IEMs themselves is made out of an aluminum alloy. It's a mixture between like a metal finish on the outside and a see-through finish, uh, kind of what actually goes into your ear canal. Now I will say that the looks of these is actually quite generic in comparison to the OH1s and the OH10s. Uh, I just like the finish that they have and the design that they have better on those. This to me, again, just kind of looks like a generic pair of IEMs. Now, the nozzle on this pair is actually quite wide, uh, but that's not an issue. It actually is a very comfortable pair of IEMs. It sits pretty close inside your ear canal, so it's not one of those that like sticks out and looks pretty obnoxious. Now, as far as what they've included in the box, uh, surprisingly, it did not come with any kind of case or pouch. I've definitely gotten used to that with pretty much every IEM, but what it did come with is three sets of silicone ear tips. It also comes with a braided case Cable that uses an angled three and a half millimeter plug-in uh, and it also uses the two pin connector so you know that's pretty common in a lot of IEMs you probably have a lot of these cables laying around if you have other pairs uh, so this is definitely something you can easily switch out uh, because kind of sticking to the theme of being generic this is definitely a generic looking cable there's nothing to really make these stand out uh, which then you know leaves hope the sound is going to be what makes these stand out now these do have a low impedance level of 23 ohms uh, it is very very easy to drive these there's really no amp that's necessary you don't have to you could just plug this straight into your phone if it has a headphone jack or your laptop or tablet or whatever uh, you're gonna get plenty of volume out of these but I do still recommend an amp so that it can pull out more of the bass the mids and the treble uh, the amp that I use most of the time with these is the Moondrop Moon River 2 Ti I believe I'll put a link to that in the description along with these uh, and that definitely was more than enough to pull out the bass, the mids, and the trebles. So as far as actually the way that they describe the sound in comparison to what I experienced with these, it says that it's tuned to be balanced, but it's definitely not balanced in like a flat way. It kind of think of it as like a W sound signature. So the bass is elevated, it kind of drops a little bit, and then the mids are elevated, and then it kind of drops a little bit, and then the treble is elevated. Again, it kind of makes a W. And this type of sound signature, they're able to pull off because of using that dynamic driver mixed with four balance armature drivers. So they're able to elevate the bass with the dynamic driver and then the other balanced armature drivers are able to pull everything else out. And so what you get is a very bass forward, but not bass heavy, if that makes any sense. It's not like a subwoofer type bass. The bass is fairly aggressive, but it is tight and it's punchy and it's quick, which means it works really good with genres like metal. This is where, you know, bass heavy IEMs usually get a little bit sloppy with metal. It just can't keep up the double bass of the drums. And that is 
is not an issue with this pair. This pair can keep up. Uh, it sounds great. Uh, the bass has some air to it, so it just doesn't sound like it's right there in front of your face uh, and trying to be too aggressive. And the mids on this pair are definitely pushed forward. It doesn't matter if it was male or female vocalists or certain guitar tones. They definitely sound up front. Uh, there's a lot of characteristics and details that these IEMs pull out, and that's interesting mixing it with an aggressive bass pair of IEMs. And then the treble also has a nice sparkle to it. Now at times, depending on what you're listening to and how loud you're listening to them, they can be a little harsh, and to me that's fine. To me that actually works out great if you're going to have your bass and your mids pushed forward. You wouldn't want the details uh, to kind of be subdued or kind of pushed down uh, because of everything else being pushed. Up. So this is an in your face, but if they're going to say balanced, the only thing I would say it's balanced is everything is just pushed up. It's not flat or reference style. So if that's what you're expecting, uh, you're going to be disappointed there. If you're a bass head and you like that kind of bass that hits and sits around for a little bit, that's not what this pair does either. But that is definitely what the OH1s and the OH10s do. Uh, the bass is a lot looser on those in comparison to these, in my opinion. And then when it comes to the soundstage and the sound imaging, it's actually done really well on this pair. It, it sounds like there's a lot of separation. It's really easy to tell where different sounds are coming from. And it actually made me feel like I was in a pretty large room. So I was impressed with that, especially considering everything is kind of pushed a little forward. Uh, so if I'm going to grade these into the different genres, uh, when it comes to pop and hip hop, this is where I would give these an eight. And that's mainly because even though it does have that aggressive bass, not having that subwoofer bass may turn some people people off. Uh, but when it comes to rock and metal, I give it a 10. It just keeps up well. You're able to feel the drums uh, and you're able to hear the vocals and guitar riffs. Like It, it seems like it's made for these genres. Uh, but when it comes to easy listening or country or anything that's a little more vocal driven, I would give it a 9. Uh, mids are great, so vocals always sound good. And then when it comes to media, so if you're watching movies or videos or games, this is where I would give these a 9 as well. Just because the bass has a tight impact, so explosions sound good. Uh, the mids being as forward as they are means dialogue always stood out. And again, the treble being elevated means hearing all the details and, you know, movies and stuff like that just always came through. So my overall rating is a solid nine. Uh, this is, again, another impressive pair by Eco, but it kind of is going in a different direction than the OH1s and the OH10s. It's kind of showing they're not like a one-trick pony, but it also shows that they can offer something under a hundred bucks. So yeah, I can easily recommend this pair. I think it's a pair of IEMs that's pretty universal across the board. Uh, the only two types of people I can see that maybe wouldn't like these is a bass head or somebody on the opposite end of the spectrum that's looking for that flat or reference style sound. It definitely does not do either one of those, but it kind of meets in the middle and does everything else extremely well. So, guys, that's my video on the Eco High Ear C. Thank you so much for checking out this video. Thank you so much for checking out all the other videos. And as always, make sure to stay tuned for more.